MCQ discussion two. Number one, which one of the following statement is correct regarding the structure of DNA molecules? Correct statement. Both strands of DNA molecules are similar. No, they are not uh, similar, right? They are different. Neither based on the nitrogenous bases, always purine base, pair with the peri specific pyrimidine base. The ad in uh, adenine pairs with thymine. In Angika adenine tino na yaha pate mo pata tino na thymine. Ikaka guanine tino na yaha pate yaha pate tino na cytosine, right? So they are not similar. The nitrogenous bases are paired on the outside of the helix. No, nitrogenous ba bases, they paired in the interior. Neither. Now it's similar to a ladder. Ladder gear de pate tiene me digger tir me lines de capigano egeniga sugar phosphate backbone nigga similar to that. And the ladder get in a step swagetamai, nitrogenous bases. Nitrogenous bases are paired in the inside of the helix. Fourth one, the backbone of a polynucleotide chain is composed of nitrogenous bases and pentose sugars. No, now backbone, backbone is composed of sugars and pentose uh, units, right? Sugar phosphate units. And the pentose sugars and phosphate groups. Fifth one, one complete turn consists of 10 bases in the double helical structure. Here, this is also incorrect because why not 10 bases? It should be 10 base pairs. 10 base pairs. So, the answer should be third answer. The two strands are held together by hydrogen bonds between the nitrogenous bases, right? Always a purine base pairs with the specific pyrimidine base, right? Here, adenine uh, pairs with thymine by two hydrogen bonds, whereas guanine pairs with cytosine with three hydrogen bonds. So for the first question, the answer should be third answer. Second one. Which of the following is a difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell? First one, subcellular components are not surrounded by <clears throat> membranes. And in eukaryotic cells, there are only subcellular components surrounded by membranes. What are these subcellular components? There are many subcellular components in a cell, right? Um, the organelles, the subcellular components which are surrounded by a membrane and suspended in the cytosol are called organelles, which are specialized for the function, right? Now, in eukaryotic cells, there are only subcellular components surrounded by membrane. No. Now, if we take ribosomes, centrosomes, cytoskeleton, they are not membrane bounded, right? So, this first statement is incorrect. Second one. Microtubules are absent in prokaryotic cells. Microtubules are present in eukaryotic cell. That is correct. Third one, only 70 ribosomes are present in prokaryotic cell. And in eukaryotic cell, only 80 ribosomes are present. Now, ribosomes, they are found in all cells. right? But there are two types, 70s and 80s. In prokaryotes, they have only these 70 ribosomes, which are smaller. But in eukaryotes, they possess both 70s as well as 80s ribosomes. 70s ribosomes are found in the mitochondria and chloroplast, whereas 80s ribosomes, they are present attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. Fourth one, DNA does not bind with proteins. No, this is incorrect, right? Now, if we take archaea, they also have prokaryotic cellular organization. They some have, pro, uh, they are in some uh, archaea, in some species, their DNA is associated with proteins. And in eukaryotic cells, DNA binds with proteins. Fifth one, all organisms fix nitrogen. No, not all organisms, right? Uh, some have the ability to fix nitrogen. But in eukaryotes, uh, none have the ability to 
fixed atmospheric nitrogen. So for the second question, the answer will be second answer. Question number three. Select the correct statement regarding cell walls. All prokaryotes have cell walls consisting of peptidoglycan. Right? Now here they are asking the correct statement. First statement is incorrect. Not all prokaryotes. Uh, now um, peptidoglycan is present in the cell wall of bacteria, right? Not in all prokaryotes. Then second one, chemical composition of the cell walls is similar in the cell types of same species, no, right? Now, if we take plant cell walls, cell wall, com the chemical composition, it varies from uh, species to species. All broadest horses Cell walls mainly composed of cellulose. All broadest possess cell walls, that is incorrect. Now, if we take amoeba, euglena, they lack cell wall, even though they categorized under protist. In plant cells, adjoining cell walls join through plasma desmata. That is also incorrect. Right? Plasma desmata, microscopic channels which run through the plant cell wall. They are cytoplasmic living connections between the cytoplasm of adjoining cells, right? Fifth statement, the secondary cell wall is deposited interior to the primary cell wall. That, that uh, statement is correct. So for the third question, answer should be fifth answer. Which of the following is correct regarding the allosteric regulation of enzymes? These are made up of one or uh, they are made up of one or more subunits, right? It should be two or more subunits, not one or more, right? So that is incorrect. Then regulatory molecules affect only the shape of the enzyme. No, it affects the sh both shape and function of the enzyme. Fourth one, regulatory molecules bind to specific regulatory sites of an enzyme irreversibly. Now, you know, regulatory molecules are activators or inhibitors. They bind to specific regulatory site, right, uh, of the molecules via non-covalent interaction. If it binds via non-covalent interaction, then it's a reverse, they are reversible. If they bind through covalent interactions, they are irreversible. So fourth statement also incorrect. Then fifth one, intermediate products of metabolism involves in the regulation of production of more end products than required. No, that is also incorrect, right? Here end products. Uh, involves in regulation of production of end products, right? Feedback inhibition. So here for the fourth question, the answer should be third answer. Question number five. An adaptation developed during plant evolution by C4 plants to reduce form respiration is that they are bundle sheet cells fix carbon twice? No, it's not an adaptation to reduce photorespiration, right? That is incorrect. Then uh, they are relatively smaller in size? No. Photolyzed water molecules? No. Then they are chloroplast rich in grana? That is incorrect, right? In the resource book also, they have given, um, now, in the bundle sheet cell, what, what happened? In the bundle sheet cell, Calvin cycle takes place, right? Bundle sheet chloroplast, so they, they possess very few less differentiated grana or grana are absent, right? 
to prevent light reactions. Had the Natamukudavi, light reactions, Unot, oxygen had the Nama, had the Ethening eat a passer, then that oxygen will react with Rubisco. Then reduce the amount of photosystem 2. Yeah. Photosystem PS2 in the battle sheet cells are depleted in order to lower the oxygen production in battle sheet cells. So for the fifth question, answer should be fifth answer. Then sixth one, that is from cellular respiration, which can be considered as an event that occurs outside the mitochondria in aerobic cellular respiration. Outside the mitochondria. Releasing carbon dioxide by decarboxylation? No. Outside the mitochondria, what happened? Glycolysis takes place, right? In glycolysis, no involvement of oxygen. If there is no involvement of oxygen, how carbon dioxide produced, right? So that is incorrect. Oxidation of FADH2 that takes place in the electron transport chain, right? Uh, that is also incorrect. Then reduction of molecule oxygen? No. Then uh, complete oxidation of a glucose molecule? Then neither. Then pyruvate, in the presence of oxygen, they can enter into the mitochondria and they can completely oxidize. Now, if we take anaerobic respiration and fermentation, what happened? There is no oxygen, right? So, in aero anaerobic respiration and uh, uh, fermentation, right? These glucose molecules, it do not completely oxidize. So that is also incorrect. Production of ATP by substrate level phosphorylation, that is the correct answer. Sixth question, answer should be fourth answer. Seventh question, that is from the third unit. Which of the following is correct regarding the origin of life on Earth and evolution? Synthesis of organic molecules from inorganic molecules occurred in the ocean. That is incorrect. Second one, protocell was formed by accumulation of RNA into lipid and protein bound vesicles. Right? Here, um, RNA accumulated into lipid bound vesicles and they form protocells. Right? These protocells, they exhibit enzyme catalyzed activities and they can they, they have the ability to grow replicate and evolve but here they have given protocell formed by accumulation of rna into lipid and protein bounded right it's the lipid bound vesicles not protein so that is also incorrect fourth one the origin of human lineage took place 10 million years ago right now, human species, they origin around uh, one, 195,000 years ago, right? That is incorrect. Fossils of oldest known bodies are similar to brown algae? No, similar to green algae. So the answer should be third answer. Tetrapod evolved from lock fin fish. Question number eight. Some important features regarding plants are given below. Xylem tissue consists of tracheids, fibers, and parenchyma, producing only one type of spores, production of pollen grains, possessing erect stem with produced strobules. The common characteristic shown by both nephrolepis and lycopodium from the above characteristic are right now. If we take D, possessing erect stem with produced strobulus, strobulus is found in cellogenin, right? Not in nephrolepis. So that is not common. So we can remove all the answers containing D. Then C, produce production of pollen grains. That is also not common, right? Then B, producing only one type of spores, homosporous. That is correct. Right? Xylem tissue consists of tracheids, fibers, and parenchyma. That is also common. So A and B, answer number one. Number nine, 
what is the characteristic that differentiate agaricus from ascomycota Agar agaricus they belongs to the basineo mycota you know uh, in uh, kingdom fungi there are four phylum phylum criteria mycota cycomycota ascomycota and basineo mycota so agaricus puffball shell fungi they belongs to phylum basineo mycota Right? So they are terrestrial. They are the major decomposers and they are some are symbionts. Then uh, filamentous with septi and they are dicaryotic. Right? Mycelium is the dominant stage of the life cycle and they produce basidio carbs during their sexual reproduction. And uh, yeah, these basidio pores, they produce basidio spores on basidium and they are exogenous. Right? Production of exogenous asexual spores? No, it's not a difference. Then uh, production of endogenous sexual spores? Now, if we take, if we compare ascomycota and basidiomycota, how is the balance? Habitat take ascomycota, marine, freshwater, terrestrial. But in basidiomycota, habitat is terrestrial. Then mycelium in ascomycota it is branched as well as basidiomycota also have branched mycelia, and both are septate, right? Then uh, then ascomycota they are parasitic or symbiotic, but basidiomycota majorly are decomposers or symbiotic. Then asexual reproduction in as ascomycota, asexual reproduction occurs by conidia, which are exogenous spores, right? They are non motile But in basidiomycota, asexual reproduction is rare, okay? Rare. Then uh, that's why first statement is incorrect. Then sexual reproduction, ascomycota, it occurs by fusion of sexually differentiated gametangia form and Ascus. Basidiomycota, sexual reproduction occurs and it is exogenous, produce protein bodies called basidiocarps during sexual reproduction. Then, yeah. So, production of eight basidiopores on basidium. Basidiopores, they are produced on, uh, in agaricus, right? In ascomycota, they produce ascopores, right? On ascus. Uh, production of sexually differentiated gametangia. They came away. So the answer should be second answer for the ninth question. Answer should be second answer. Question number 10. Which of the following correct statement regarding animal or phylum Chordata. Only animals of class Reptilia possess scales in their body covering. No, that is incorrect. Right? That is incorrect. Animals belong. What are the uh, what are the characteristics of? I mean, the structural features of reptiles which enable them to successfully adapt to a terrestrial uh, mode of life. Presence of internal respiratory surfaces. Dry skin without glands, scaly skin, that means presence of scales, presence of organs for internal fertilization, eggs with shells, embryos with fetal membranes, right? Those are the adaptations for the terrestrial life. Animals belong to the class Conrich TS have cloaca, that is correct. Third one. Animals of class amphibia living freshwater on land and marine. No, there are no any marine species in class amphibia. Animals of class aves, reptilian and amphibia possess eggshells with shell. Yeah, that is correct for aves and reptilia, but amphibia they don't possess egg, uh, shells, eggs with shells. Jelly jelly Hollow nerve cord is located between Digestive tract and not a cord. That is also incorrect. Right? Uh, this not a cord, longitudinal, 
flexible rod called notochord. It's located between the digestive tube and the nerve cord, right? This nerve cord, it's located dorsal to the notochord. So for the 10th question, the answer should be second answer. Question number 11, which of the following is correct regarding plant tissues? Colon chyma cells possess unevenly thickened secondary cell walls. That is incorrect. All the meristematic cells, they constantly divide and elongate and differentiate later. Meristematic cells, they have the ability to divide, right? But they do not constantly divide. They divide under suitable con conditions and produce new cells, right? Guard cells of all plant leaves are bean-shaped. No, bean-shaped guard cells are present in dicots. In monocots, they are dumbbell-shaped. Chemicals secreted by some trichomes uh, involving defense against herbivores. That is correct. Vessel elements of xylem tissue are wider and have thicker walls than tracheids. Incorrect. So the answer should be fourth answer. Twelfth one. Which of the following is not a relevant feature adapted for the efficient light capturing in plants? Arrangement of leaves on the plant stem, right? It's an adaptation for the efficient light capturing. Then shade avoidance. Undergoing secondary growth due to the... Uh, when when the when they when the plants undergo secondary growth, right? They can like their stem become more stronger, so they can they can grow taller, right? Usete usete udeta Then forest ya gatha ham itena gas goda apindi nee yata nee udeta gihila ondati irelia absorb karega na pulva. Having horizontally arranged leaves, it's an adaptation to absorb more light. Having broad leaves in plants in a very cold environment, that is incorrect. Right? See the gahaka, right? We cannot see broad leaves. Broad leaves can be seen in uh, plants growing in rainforest, right? In uh, plants species that inhabit in dry or very cold environment, they have small leaves, right? So, for the 12th question, the answer should be 5th answer. 13th question, which of the following is correct regarding exchange and transportation of materials in plant? Some gases move by facilitated diffusion. What is facilitated diffusion? Now, you have to learn about active transport and passive transport. Passive transport, it occurs spontaneously, right? It do not require metabolic energy, that means ATP. But uh, movement of some materials across the membrane takes place with the use of, with the help of ATP, and it is called active transport, right? Under passive transport, we have to learn about diffusion, osmosis, inhibition, imbibition, facilitated diffusion, and bulk flow. Facilitated diffusion means the movement of water and hydrophilic solutes across the membranes passively with the help of transport proteins that span the membrane, right? So that is for the movement of water and hydrophilic solutes. So gases, they are moved by diffusion, not by facilitated diffusion. So the first statement is incorrect. Second one. Gaseous exchange is possible via stomata and denticles only. That is incorrect, right? Now, if we take transpiration in plants, right, it takes place. There are three types of transpiration. Stomatal, cuticular, and lenticles. So, through the cuticle also, water can be lost. Gaseous exchange can be occurred. Always mineral transportation in plant is active. That is incorrect. Water moves through cell walls 
Now, are you cutting again? If you make a very divine, then in phloem translocation, right? Phloem sap it contain minerals. So phloem translocation it can be active or passive, right? Water moves through cell walls via bulk flow. That is correct. Fifth statement: Water moves actively through plant body during some instances. Incorrect, right? Accent of xylem sap. It is passive process. Answer uh, for the thirteenth question. Answer should be fourth answer. Which of the following is correct regarding components of water potential in plants? Pressure potential is always a positive value. No, it can be a negative one, right? Now in uh, xylem sap, accent of xylem sap, it is driven by negative pressure. The water potential of a system is determined by total number of water molecules it contains. No. That is determined by the solute, uh, the number of solute molecules, right? Solute potential is equal to the water potential, right, of a cell which is in incipient plasmolysis. That is correct. Solute potential is equal to the pressure potential of a plastic cell. That is incorrect, right? Um, in a plastic cell, Pressure potential is zero. So, solute potential is equal to water potential. Pressure potential is equal to the water potential of a fully turgid cell. cell. In a fully turgid cell, water potential is zero. So, psi T, pressure potential is equal to psi S, solute potential. So, for the 14 question, answer should be third answer. The table below given plant genera, the nature of the gametophyte and necessity of water for fertilization. Right? Select the suitable combination regarding the plant genera, nature of gametophytes and necessity of water for fertilization. Now here, uh, Nephrolephes seekers cellagenilla. Then gametophyte photosynthetic, non photosynthetic, photosynthetic female gametophyte, external vortices, not essential, right? Abhi balu maker. Seekers and gatot, ban palaminika AQY, nephrolephes, non photosynthetic, and only internal vortices essential, that is incorrect. ARZ, nephrolephes, photosynthetic female gametophyte, external water is uh, essential. That is also incorrect. Neither. Then, uh, now here, if we take the nephrolephes, what are the... Uh, now, sporophyte is the dominant stage. Gametophyte is reduced and short lived right? These uh, sporophyte and gametophyte, both are independent and photosynthetic. What are the features of the sporophyte? Right? In the, the sporophyte, the plant body is differentiated into roots, stem and leaves. Cuticle is found in the aerial parts of the plant body. Then stomata develop on aerial parts for gaseous exchange. Two types of vascular tissues present. Fiddlehead young leaves. Then leaves are compound pinnate leaves. Long underground branches cause tolerance present, right? Then if we take the gametophyte, gametophyte is a small, hard shape, macroscopic green colored photosynthetic thallus, right? Photosynthetic. It is bisexual. Monoecious can bisexual. Both antheridia and archegonia, they will develop on the ventral side. Okay? Uh, after that, here, antheridium, it produce male gametophyte, male part, it produce flagellated sperms and release them into the external water, external environment. Okay? And uh, archegonium, it produce egg and retains it. 
So motile sperms, they swim through the external water towards the egg and they enter the archegonia through chemical attractors. And sperm fuses with the egg result in the diploid zygote. Okay, so here photosynthetic female gametophyte, A, R, is it? Female gametophyte here, gametophyte is dioecious. Okay, bisexual, sorry, monoecious, bisexual. So we can't take that part. BQY, seekers. Gametophyte is non photosynthetic. Then Y, only internal body is essential. I, that is correct, right? Now, if we take the life cycle of seekers, right? Sporophyte is the, again, again, sporophyte is the dominant photosynthetic plant. Gametophyte is reduce and gametophyte depends on the it depends on the sporophyte throughout its life okay sporophytes are perennial trees with roots stems and leaves unbranched columnar body they have tap root system tap root system at the end fibrous naming they have female and male plants these female plant, they produce crown of megasporophylls. And male plant, male plant, it produce male cones with microsporophylls. And they have like a pollen tube, so they don't need external water for fertilization. They need internal water. Okay. So the answer should be third answer. Question number 16, which of the following is correct regarding the stresses in plants and their responses? Drought stress, increased synthesis and release of gibberellic acid. It's not gibberellic, it is abscisic acid, ABA. Cold stress, increase the proportion of unsaturated fatty acids of their plasma membrane. That is correct. Salt stress, producing solutes that can tolerate low concentration? No. Right? Eka vanadi. Ittana mukadda karanne. They respond to moderate soil salinity by producing solutes that are well tolerated at high concentration. Not low. Biotic stress, having root hairs, pricks and trichomes. Having root hairs, bricks and trichomes, neme, that is incorrect, right? Thorns, bricks and trichomes. Root hairs, neme, thorns, katu tiyeni. Root hairs, kela dila tiyeni, hinda, kavaradi. Soil stress, keep higher water potential in the cell than that of soil solution. Then, ehe murad mugadavini. Gahe tiyeni, kani cells wali, eli eridamai vaturayani. Gila gila rata yang sales tika akili lah yang nak pulwa. Eh mana tu ada ni hari? Eka tama ya prevent keran ni. Hari tu? So that is also incorrect. So for the sixteenth question, answer should be second answer. Seventeenth question that is from hormones, plant hormones. Select the correct combination regarding the plant growth substance and their function. So to answer this kind of questions, you should. You should you have you have you should know that table. You have to study that table, right? Even this time, they can ask an essay question from this plant growth um, these plant growth substances. Essay kaplinna pulwa. Gibberellins stimulate pollen development and growth of pollen tube. Let's take the uh, functions of gibberellins first one. I think they have given six. Functions stimulate stem elongation, stimulate pollen development, stimulate pollen tube growth, stimulate fruit growth, stimulate seed development and germination, then regulate sex determination and transition from juvenile to adult phase. Right? So, this gibberellin is found in root or shoot tips, young tips, and germinating seeds. Gibberellin is an elemental composition like carbon, hydrogen, oxy. So, First term is this correct. Second one, oxygen stimulates stem elongation at high concentration. 
No, it stimulates stem elongation in low concentration. Abscisic acid retards leaf abscission, right? No, it promotes leaf sensiness. Do not have any, um, it, it do not involve in leaf, leaf abscission. Ethylene inhibits growth of roots. Ethylene, it inhibits growth of roots and root hairs. No, it promotes, uh, it promotes this root and root hair formation. Then cytokinin promote movement of nutrients away from skin. Uh, sink, sorry, not skin. Uh, sink, that is also incorrect, right? It promote movement of nutrients into sink tissues, not away. So the answer should be. 17th question answer should be first answer. 18th question, select the combination, correct combination regarding epithelial tissue and the site where are they located. Ciliated epithelium, fallopian tube, that is correct, right? Then simple cuboidal epithelium, artery wall, that is incorrect, right? Cuboidal epithelium that is specialized for secretion. They are found in kidney tubules, then thyroid glands, salivary glands. That is the simple squamous ectomy or artery ball severe DNA. Then uh, nasal passage, simple columnar epithelium. No. Right? That is incorrect. They have pseudo stratified columnar epithelium. Alveolitis, pseudostratified epithelium? No. They have simple squamous epithelium. Pharynx, simple squamous epithelium? Incorrect. Right? So, answer should be first answer. 19th question. Which of the following statement is correct regarding a liver lobule of a human? Hofer cells are located between columns of hepatocyte, right? That is incorrect. It is the structural and functional unit of liver. No, not both structural and functional, right? Not both structural and functional. Now, if we take the liver, this is the largest gland in the body, right? And... Uh, uh, it is a, there are four lobes, right? Liver contain four lobes. Each lobe is made up of tiny hexagonal shaped lobules. Liver lobules are the functional unit, right? Functional unit. Then these uh, lobules, they are made up of cuboidal cells called hepatocysts. Hepatocysts are arranged in pairs of columns radiating from the central name, central vein. Right? Between two pairs of columns, there are sinusoids containing mixture of blood from the tiny branches of the portal vein and hepatic artery. Right? Then hepatic macrophages, evatama kufa cells, they are found in the lining of the sinusoids. Right? Yes. Then nutrient-rich blood is carried to the sinusoid via the central vein, incorrect. Sinusoid contains a mixture of blood with oxygen rich and nutrients rich. Yeah, that is correct. Next, I told you between the two pairs of columns of cell, there are sinusoid, blood cells with incomplete walls containing mixture of blood from tiny branches of hepatic portal vein and hepatic artery, right? So this arrangement, it, it allows uh, it allows venous blood, right? Venous blood, they have low oxygen concentration and high concentration of nutritional materials. And it mix with the arterial blood. And the, so that is the correct answer. In the corners of the lobule, a branch of hepatic artery, a branch of hepatic vein, and a branch of bile duct can be seen. Right? It's an aratica branch of stomach, branch of hepatic artery, branch of hepatic portal vein, and 
intralobular bile duct. Okay. Intralobular bile duct. So, uh, the answer should be fourth answer. 20th question. Which of the following statement is true regarding the transport of respiratory gases in man? Second one. Carbon dioxide react with water to form carbonic acid in alveoli blood capillaries. Right? Now, if we take the transportation of carbon dioxide, normally oxygen is transported as oxyhemoglobin. Eh? It goes binds with the, in the, each hemoglobin molecule and transport for oxygen molecule at the same time. Right? If we take the carbon dioxide transportation, there are three types. As bicarbonate in the plasma, as carb amino hemoglobin, and dissolved in plasma as a free gas. Now here carbon dioxide reacts with uh, reacts with water to form carbonic acid ions bicarbonate, bicarbonate ions, right? Bicarbonate. So second one is incorrect. Carbonic acid dissociate to carbon dioxide and water in the systemic capillaries? Incorrect. Carbon dioxide react with water to form carbonic acid in the interstitial fluid of tissues? Incorrect. Right? Oxyhemoglobin dissociate in the interstitial fluid of tissues? That is also incorrect. First one, one carb amino hemoglobin is formed in systemic blood capillaries that only pulmonary and systemic you know pulmonary ethanity in the lung sake and it again heart taking deoxygenated blood around you know again a good oxygen dog in a year and you know it and them a good pulmonary the system in kick at the mind around it body organs for it a blood supply current a is a ticket right so for the 20th question answer should be first answer 21 Following are some statements regarding vertebrate blood circulation. All vertebrates possess close blood circulatory system that is correct. Oxygen rich blood pumped by the ventricle reaches body cells in single circulation incorrect. Both the left and right ventricle pump blood in equal pressure in the double circulation. No. Then, ethana gatta ham api close circulatory system mika ka gatto. Then api gatto left and right. Hari na left ekem mo gatda karanne. Left ventricle sali mo gatda karanne. Left ventricles. Now, if we take the thick thickness of the walls, normally. Thickness of the ventricle, wall of the ventricles are greater than the thickness of the atrium, right? And wall of the left ventricle is thicker than the wall of the right ventricle. Because why? Right vent again, right ventricle it pump blood into the blood to the lungs. And then lungs are the my pump can lungs the any heart take a lung. Have a left ventricle, it has to pump blood to the Aorta which supply blood throughout the body. In an ethanol pressure in the body. Harin aorta get a local pressure in the nunya, yamulu and the purama blood in the yaga wall like a like thickness like a body. In ethanol pressure in the body. Harin then a the came a pressure equal net. So statement C is also incorrect. Blood flows under reduced pressure from gas exchange surface to other organs. Right? Yes. Pulmonary circuit is not completely separated from a systemic circuit in some vertebrates which show double circulation. That is also correct. So A, D, E, correct. Answer number 3. 22. Select the correct statement regarding respiratory process in man. Highest percentage of gas in inspiratory air is oxygen. Right, that is incorrect. External respiration is the transport of oxygen from the alveoli to tissues and transport of carbon dioxide from the tissues from the tissues of alveoli. 
right? Then api gato to ke jati de gakti erwa respiration external and internal. External means the transport of O2 from the lungs to the blood and movement of carbon dioxide from the blood. Internal means movement of oxygen from blood to the tissues and movement of carbon dioxide from tissues to blood. Right? The method of the external respiration is the transport of O2 from alveoli to tissue that is incorrect. Right? That is incorrect. Even after a normal expiration, about 1,200 milliliter of air remains in the lung. It would take a month the end lung volumes and capacities. The tidal volume, it is the volume of air inhaled and exhaled with each breath during the normal breathing. So, on average, it is 500. Right? Even after a normal expiration, about 1,200. Normal expiration is 1,200. Right? Residual volume, that is 1,200. Residual volume, that means the, it is the volume of air that remains in the lungs even after a forceful expiration. You can very poorly hear them. It does this year. In the humanity. Then fifth one, partial pressure of oxygen is higher than partial pressure of carbon dioxide in pulmonary arteries. Now, pulmonary arteries are lungs for the blood gain. Lungs for the gain is deoxygenated. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide is greater than partial pressure of oxygen. So, the answer should be fourth answer. For the 22nd question, the answer should be fourth answer. 23. Which of the following statement is acceptable regarding immunity? BCG vaccine is prepared by killed mycobacterium tuberculosis. That is incorrect. Right? Then, uh, the BCG is again tuberculosis. Right, prepared from a strain of attenu attenuated live tuberculosis bacteria. Then, second line defense is activated by artificial active immunity. Right, artificial active immunity, but uh, it is a long lasting immunity. Active animal, it's long lasting, passive, and shorter. Right, artificial, act artificial vaccines inject. Second line defense is activated by artificial active immunity. No, that is incorrect. Right? Then, in multiple sclerosis, myelin sheath around the neurons attacked by B cells, it can be plasma cells. Right? Multiple sclerosis can be got the, it's an autoimmune disease. Here, not B cells, it should be T cells. Right? T cells tamai attack karan. In the ekavaradi. Antibodies as well as memory cells are produced in the host by blood serum given in passive immunity. Antibodies as well as memory cells. Memory cells in one of the long term vena. Active immunity. Methana tawakenega blood serum vena kiyane. Ne de kidine already prepared antibodies. Etika tiena ka on immunity ka ange tiena ma eti ki varuna ma ara immune responses ange na short term. Ena ange thera memory cells thene na. Kani the that is incorrect. Immune deficiency diseases can be developed due to absence of responses in the immune system to antigen. Right? Immune or deficiency diseases ke la piya vati kiya na. So the answer should be fifth answer. Twenty third. The answer should be fifth answer. Twenty four. The table given below is relevant to structures of carbon dioxide excretion and nitrogenous waste excretions of some animals. Select the correct combination. Earthworm body surface. Earthworm can be analytic. Can you the? Ah, carbon dioxide and nitrogenous excretion. Organs thin a thin. First one, 
carbon dioxide excretion, eglang animal earthworm, right? Sing so they they transport uh, uh, they do gaseous exchange by through the body surface by diffusion. So first one is correct. And nitrogenous excretion by metanephridia. Right? Or flame cells are the mark and protonephridia. And flatworms like the end. First one is correct. Spider, tracheal system and green glands. Right? Uh, terrestrial arthropod correct. It's a good area the end of the end of the malfeasure tubules. Shark, lungs and kidney. Right? They have kidney. But uh, do they possess lungs, shark, so fish, neither. Malwick, it would take lungs, the lungs, the other. Mm Oh, sorry. They have internal gills. Gills name is called internal gills. External, internal gills. Internal gills. Prones. Prones. Prones are the internal gills. Nitrogenous excretion. They do nitrogenous excretion. They have a green glands. Right? Green glands. Not malfeasant you use. Frog. Frogs got the hammer. Uh, amphibian, they, they can do respiration, carbon dioxide excretion by moist skin. Then by lungs, right? Not through the gills. Uh, nitrogenous excretion, kidney. Incorrect. So the answer should be first answer. Which of the following is correct regarding human brain? Cerebral hemispheres are connected by corpus callosum, which is a mass of gray matter, no, white matter. That is incorrect. Pia meter is the meninges situated just outer to the central nervous system. Correct. Third ventricle is located in the midbrain. Incorrect. Right? Surface of the central nervous system always composed of gray matter. No. The brain stem consists of pons varoli. Cerebellum and the medulla oblongata. That is also incorrect. For the 25th question, answer should be second answer. At the brain stem, make a mono the end only. Midbrain, pons varoli and medulla oblongata. Cerebellum, name it. the midbrain. Midbrain, pons varoli and medulla oblongata. Right. So we have discussed 25 questions. Uh, answers to the monkey again. First one, third answer. Second question, second answer. Third one, fifth answer. Fourth one, third answer. Fifth one, fifth answer. Sixth one, fourth answer. Seventh one, third answer. Eighth one, first answer. Ninth one, answer number two. Tenth one, answer number two. Eleven. Fourth answer, 12, fifth answer, 13, fourteenth answer, 14, third answer, 15, third answer, 16, second answer, 17, first answer, 18, first answer, 19, fourth answer, 20, first answer, 21, third answer, 22, fourth answer, 23, fifth answer, 24, first answer, 25, second answer. Hanada. Right, that's it for today. Uh, yeah, any doubts?